Hello and welcome to Darius Movie School and today we take a look at Lone Wolf and Cub and Cub, 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 not the Cub, Lone Wolf and Cub and I have here um, three issues of that in Dean A5. Uh, if you can get it bigger, get it bigger because you're bigger, the bigger the drawings the more beautiful, beautiful you can enjoy them. Before I start reviewing this, um, I ordered this a while ago because I heard it was a masterpiece. It was um, also in line with me watching The Last Samurai and loving some of kick assery and honesty. Um, and before we start, um, let's see, let's take a look at my notes. Um, good values, we will come to that in a second. I have a new movie channel. It's in the ding in the in the ding down below. No, it's in the link down below. That's the moment when you say, "Oh, hit the bell, subscribe, like." No, fuck that shit. I mean, you can do it, but you know what I mean. This is YouTube. I'm not milking you with um, clickbaity titles. I mean, sometimes I am, but it's not who I truly are. Am. Um, so I have a new movie channel. And I recommend movies there because like comics and movies are a big part of my life. Storytelling story in general and also the quintessential thing about storytelling. And that's where we're coming. Um, this I will mention in a second. And this is what I think has been lost. And that is why I want to review good comics and good movies. We have lost good values. I mean, every society claims it. Um, and yeah, the discussion, what is, what are good values are kind of, kind of, I don't know, today with all the correctness and things have been corrupted and we should go back to fun, to love, to responsibility, to health, to mental and physical and soul health and also mastery, like mastering an art mastering a craft, mastering how you talk, how you speak, how you live. I've put down here money. I wouldn't say money is evil, not at all. I just think that we kind of get distorted in this life for certain things, not necessarily money. Let's go into the lone wolf and cup and why this matters. So, um, of course, this is called a classic and I do believe it. It's by Kazuo Koike and Goseki Gojima. I guess um, this dude is the author, Kazuo Koike, good looking man. Um, yeah, he was professor um, of an art university and he's an author and wrote screenplays. And the other man is um, Goseki Gojima and he drew and animated, I guess. Let's not go too into deep. And uh, yeah, this is uh, Lone Wolf and Cub. It's about a samurai and his son. And they are, he is a ruthless murder mercenary with his son. But that's just on the surface. Let's get into this and I will tell you what I think about it. I was a bit reminded, well, I guess Berserk comes later. And I would say also that um, Fist of the North Star probably comes later. But we have a certain theme, a theme of a lonesome, honorable warrior killing his way to vengeance or killing his way to honesty and truth. I have also here this book by Miyamoto Musashi, The Five Rings. Um, I don't know, I'm reading this book, don't know if it's good right now, but a lot of things um, apply, like master, um, don't eat too much, work out, certain things you have to maintain. Sorry for rambling on for four minutes, but it's all important. I will put it in a timestamp. So, I'm sorry for the rambling. Um, in the first story, we're introduced, uh, not really to the story, we're just jumping in and we're seeing 
that um, at the beginning um, there is a samurai and he chooses to walk with his son in this, I don't know, how do you say, baby wagon and um, this place in feudal Japan in the 1600s, I guess, and there are, uh, and Edo is the main city, it's not Tokyo, it's Edo, but it's, I guess, the same city, and he's an assassin, and he's uh, the best assassin in that time, and he gets hired to do jobs, and he always, he's like Leon the Profi, uh, Leon the Professional um, on a samurai level and he uses his uh, son or his child also for deception and um, yeah what can I say it's pretty cool at the beginning let's go a bit into the story like the drawings are good I would say um, I got myself um, a smaller version and sometimes it's a bit painterly, sometimes it's drawn. I guess the Asians in the manga paint the first pages and then they switch to pencils. I like both. I like this one even better. And it's pretty funny. It has a good humor, um, beautiful drawings and a lot of fighting, killing, stabbing. And most people who die here from his hand are, I would say, the bad guys. So we're rooting for um, the good guy, but uh, the good guy is also in his ways very violent. Um, but the bad guys share similarities. They are mostly arrogant. They try to steal, lie and cheat um, the normal villagers and um, in his first mission, sometimes you have to laugh because it's funny. He's definitely like a Bruce Willis guy. He's he's very confident. Um, I wouldn't say he's cocky. It's just that um, he is a master of his trade. And at the beginning, we see going him from mission to mission. And um, there are shorter missions and... Um, he this woman for example she's she's ill and she's awaiting um someone um well a lot of intrigues a lot of killing because the situation is this um japan is ruled by a shogun which is like um not a king not a caesar how do you call it like he's ruling the country, but uh, mostly um, before this era, nobody was ruling. Like there were like um, feudal feudalism reigning over this country, and now there are a lot of intrigues in the court, um, a lot of samurais and other people um, trying to get to the power. And a lot of people die. I mean, here, um, this woman, she she wants to kill another woman and his son so she can be the new ruler. But yeah, as you can see, a lot of swords, a lot of blood. Um, people get mostly what they did deserve. And um, this lonesome sword fighter uh, always gets the upper hand which is really cool it's not like he's overpowered he just does his job and he does it really well and so for the first couple of stories we're just following his killing missions and we learn a bit more about his character and he's a professional killer like um he is a likable guy but he also like what how do i say it i mean he has redeeming qualities, but he still remains a killer. But as the story progresses, we go deeper and deeper uh, into his backstory. And 
that's where it gets really interesting like as you can see this it it looks like a movie and that's what it should look like a good comic should feel um like a movie it's very well drawn um the story are well made and mainly in the first half of the book it's it's very much fighting until we get to um the next story and the next story is more personal and then we kind of find out what it's all about like at the beginning we're not told anything about the story and then he gets to this village and some evil uh, samurais or ronin are going from city to city and you're you're getting a sense of feudal japan like it's very much on 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 the surface uh, it seems all orderly but underneath the surface a lot of intrigues a lot of different interests and then at the end i don't want to spoil it but it's probably crucial we learn about um the choice um that that he was a sort a sword master and um he was i guess an imperial swordsman and or for the shogun but something he doesn't want to do and we learn later that the shogun or the ruling becomes tyrannical like um the shogun can only maintain his ruling through spies police work um drying everybody else up and his code of honor doesn't comply with that and in this issue we don't know yet why but he gives his son the choice um i will kill you and you will join your dead mother um choose the sword or the ball um it's your choice you you maybe won't understand it but it's your choice you choose and he goes first towards the ball then he goes towards the sword and he chooses to live and um they are here to kill him or they are here to witness him killing himself but he declines which is not what samurai under the shogun do they kill themselves and uh, die an honorable death but he is up for vengeance because his whole family and his wife were killed by an intrigue and so we learn that um, this ruthless killer has the backstory of being one of the best swords masters in the kingdom this is maybe where it's a, a bit inspired maybe this uh, miyamoto musashi was one of the best swords uh, fighters and i guess you have to train um to be the best and not to be distracted and this is also why it reminds me a bit of berserk and a bit of um yeah a kill bill it's 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 a ven in the first comic you you are not told that it's about vengeance then the second one starts and now it's clear that um kosuri okami was once uh under the how do you say he was a swordsman in the under the hand of the shogun but then they killed his family like like in gladiator like they betrayed him and now he's out for vengeance and yeah i have to say it's beautifully i don't know if it's one of the best comics i ever read some say it's a it's it's a great masterpiece i don't know if i can sense that right now it's definitely a great uh, manga or comic um but we'll see what it will bring i wanted to present it to you sometimes uh like he goes to great ordeals um to find out the information he needs like he's killing him himself towards the things he needs he's a tough guy i love he takes everything with a with a very 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 um how do you say it he takes it kind of lightly um uh, but then he comes always back with a vengeance and i'm not into violence or vengeance but sometimes um the payoff when 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 he pays off the crimes like um the opponents just die like that that's okay but sometimes 
it's also in Mad Max 4, I think um, when you build up something and it's a crime or an injustice, um, at the end, when the payoff comes, um, I don't know if it would be voy voyeuristic or bad or something like that, but sometimes, like in Mad Max 4, the bad guys get killed like that, and then it's over. And it's kind of, I don't know, and here also the bad guys sometimes get killed very quickly, and I think um, I'm more of the approach, like in a Western, like... Um, those Sergio Leone westerns or like in Berserk or Fist of the No Star in the end vengeance or the punishment which doesn't have to be um, all that drawn out but you need a release of that tension that builds up and some, sometimes the tension builds and then it gets just released too quickly so that's a bit of my critique point sometimes uh, this comic is not as clear as other comics like in Berserk or Fist of the North Star you get everything really fast and and really clear here sometimes I had problems understanding everything um, it is told beautifully it is written beautifully but sometimes just how they jump to conclusions or how quickly sometimes story ends um, lets me wanting more that's my personal note on that but yeah lone wolf and cup probably worth a reading um if you resonate with this knock yourself out see ya